exactly at that. And with that being said, we'll introduce our casters. Blitz, Lumi, take it away. Beyond, <laughs> beyond Asian casting right now we here. We did it. Nice haircut, by the way. Thank you. Looking sharp. It's trying to match you. Just like me, man. Yep. This I is the know. first time we're actually casting. I'm super excited. I know, me too. So this is going to be Invasion MBFC on one side, DK on the other. They made their predictions. What's yours? Uh, we have to get into the game, so DK 2-0. DK two, same thing here. Uh, right. I just think that DK is the more experienced team. They're less likely to kind of drop a match that they're very far ahead of. And if they fall behind, they're one of the best teams to actually come back. But DK on the radiant with the first, no, with the second pick. Does it look like second no, pick? No, the team? first, right? Because they went, if they went Nix. Got the new CM Oda, so they should be first pick, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, DK, DK had first, first pick. pick. So they grabbed the Nix assassin. That makes sense because there's only one hero selected. <laughs> yeah, so there, right. oh, there you go. <laughs> And they're going to be rounding out. The The key ban here to me right now is Darkseer because um, the offlane player for MBFC, Darkseer is his kind of signature go-to hero. And this is uh, one of the way to quote-unquote ban out a player because you have four bans on the first be before they select the third hero. You have many ways to actually ban out a single player. And Well, Darkseer already a good direction so far for DK. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those heroes too that um, it's just so good all around. It's good uh, team fight. It's good. Um, it's just got good potential overall. You can do a lot with it if you get a fast mech. It's really useful. Keep talking blitz. Okay, words are difficult. <laughs> um, but yeah, MUFC as LD predicted, they do pick up the Chen right now, and that's a really early Chen. It's not a hero that um, we've seen too frequently, like picked. It's one of those heroes that had its heyday and then it kind of came back down, but recently starting to see it a little more in the in the Asian scene. Right. And the Queen of Pain, I mean, they went to that pretty hard, right? MUFC? I think they picked it twice yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think FCFC went once on the safe lane and then the other time yeah, he went mid. solo mid. Yeah. yeah. So and he did quite well, so. I mean, what, what was kind of the big thing for me yesterday when he played a chant or when um, I think it was... Um, who, pl who played Chen yesterday? It wasn't Winter, the second support player. So, was it Ling? Ten Sounds about right. Yeah, when Ling played um, the support Chen, he got like one of the third highest seconds. GPM in the entire game, or at least creep kills. He got one of the quicker level sixes. He was just kind of rising very, very hard. Right. I'm not sure whether you want to do that against CK, who predominantly DK's plays very safely. And I feel like Chen in this game is somewhat forced into aggression to at least try to knock down a couple of tier one towers. Maybe harass burning a little bit out of the farming stage, but at the same time, it's. I feel that gyrocopter is probably one of the best uh, he carry heroes against Chen, considering the uh, the magical damage you could do out right in the early get go. Once you get call down, I feel like Chen's effectiveness in the early game somewhat Someone's diminishes, at least during the pushing stage. Yes, definitely. And actually, Kunkka going to be picked or banned out pretty quickly. That's a hero that we've just seen kind of specialized by like both DK and school. LGD. Uh huh. That's a really useful hero for both teams. And Dragon Knight, that hero I see, like, it, it feels like I see him every other game. A hero that I don't actually see banned too often, but it's such a strong pick. I mean, like Kevin says every time it gets picked, the poison does 100 damage, I think, overall to a tower. And that's for free. You just hit it once and kind of just pew pews the rest of the <laughs> way down. For me, it's, it's similarly to have, like, a Beastmaster slash Rubik kind of on your team. It comes so long range. It comes out so fast on the yeah. range form. And against certain heroes like jump in, initiate, like your four stat bat rider, your blink bat rider, it's so good. So it's seconds. a great long range initiator. And the Chinese always love to play it solo mid. He's, he's a hero that's somewhat harder to gank, harder to kill. And all you really need is BKB to be kind of a big menace in the front line. He might not really be a damaging force with a BKB, but you, you can't ignore him. Yeah. So he, he's always the annoying factor. But for me, it's actually DK banning out the void. Uh, they definitely did their homework. MEFC loves to use their Void, and even though Haunt Trash Pro might not be the best farmer, all you really need to do is drop a Chronosphere, and because carries nowadays like to go BKB early, that Chronosphere is kind of a big deal. Yeah, this is actually um, MEFC's almost identical lineup as they did yesterday, right? They picked, they had these three heroes plus Void and um, a Darkseer, I believe. Right, so, so they don't have the Void or Darkseer yeah, now. Yeah, DK actually, they did do their homework. Right. They showed up and they're like, well, these are the heroes that they had a lot of success with last time. So let's try to take these out. So what, what do you reckon they will go into here? I, I don't personally watch MEFC as much um, compared to the other Asian teams. So I'm not exactly too sure how the drafting will shape up here. Yeah. But 
Seems like they just want to pick early and aggressive heroes. I mean, Nature's Prophet, they need um they need an offlaner. So heroes like Nature's Prophet, um, Lone Druid is still available. It's it's a hero that has kind of been forgotten. Yeah, but it's still a pretty good hero. Nature's Prophet exists as well. Um, I saw Bounty Hunter once a dream hack, but I ideally they'd like a long lane and a carry here. I'm not too certain about MUSC's playstyle either. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of decent carry options. Like there's, if you want to force um, anti mage is an option. Spectre, sure, sure. Uh, Phantom Assassin. Those are the heroes that are still available because they they have both their supports. They have their mid hero. I speak for the oh, and hey, I got it right. There you go. So Nature's Prophet. Okay, so when MUSC plays with Nature's Prophet, from what I've seen, they basically don't go Midas. They go basically treads into a quick mech. But considering that there is a Chen on the map now, maybe this is one of the fewer times that they were going to go more to standard build, basically treads into, or phase into Midas, or maybe even phase into early game Shadowblade. If they plan to win the game in about 25 minutes, um, it's like what LD talked about, paraphrasing Winter, they don't want to outform Bernie, because yeah. that's a game that you're generally not winning. You just want to kind of outpush them, use that aggression to your advantage. And when you have heroes like Chen and Nature's Prophet, Tao sh should fall down quickly. Yeah. At the same token, you still have to assume that Burning's going to get some sort of farm regardless of how the game goes. Mm -hmm. And so I think building just a utility Nature's Profit might be a bad idea. Okay. I think this is a game... Just have some sort of insurance yeah, in a sense. Exactly. So I think picking up that uh, that Tread Shadowblade Midas kind of build might do pretty well in this kind of lineup. Okay, so DK... Because right now they have no physical damage, right? Well, they have some from Nature's Profit, but like you say, if he goes yeah, if he utility... Goes like mech, then right. Then kind of takes away from that. Yeah, maybe the last pick's gonna show up all that because right now they don't have Han Trash Pro's player or Han Trash Pro's hero just yet. I've seen him play Queen of Pain like once or twice, but it's not really the hero that he generally plays best. But if you look at DK's hero, you have Flat Cannon, you have Call Down, you have Rocket Cogs, and now Illuminate. Can you actually push against this? I mean, sure, I think you could probably get like your tier ones and maybe even tier two towers. I just don't see this lineup breaking the base. You're gonna have to play almost over aggressively. Uh huh. You have to pick off the Keeper of the Light if you ever want to get anything done. Plus, uh, rockets, they're really annoying to play against as well. You just continuously spam the rockets out. So it's not something that comes easily, per se. I mean, you have good hero. Uh, MUFC has good heroes to dive with, to say the least. They've got Chenda Buffer, the uh, tower hits, and the creeps. Right. Queen of Pain, obviously, has Blink. Nature's Prophet can just teleport from behind. I mean, what they have right now is a pressure lineup. You can send with Chen, uh, uh, Creeps, their mini heroes. So you can send a bunch, fight with four, and then Nature's Prophet can kind of pressure on the other side. And now they pick the Anti-Mage, which I... Uh, well, I mean, I guess I threw out every single carry in the book, but <laughs> <laughs> Anti-Mage, um, it's a good pickup because it's one of those insurance heroes, like you said. Right. Well, here's the thing, though. Anti-Mage is somewhat versatile in terms of item builds. Yeah. Is this a game where you go kind of treads, battle fairy, and then you farm up to ultra late game? Or is this a game where you say, treads, vats, let's go. Let's make something happen. Get those tier one, tier two down. I think regardless of how it goes, I think the most efficient build on a hero like Anti-Mage will always be um, battle fairy manta. Uh -huh. Sometimes a BKB after something like a Yasha might be necessary if there's too much uh, crowd control. Right. But I don't necessarily think this is one of those games. Okay. So... This is one of the m one of the earlier builds from Anti Mage, then yeah. at least what you expect. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd expect him to go the Treads Battle Fury Manta, and then if he, uh, I mean, because if you look at DK's lineup, they don't really have too much lockdown. There's the Nick stun, and then aside from that, what else do you really have to worry about? Like, Mono Leak Battery. So yeah, those are not exactly your true stuns here. And this last pick, the Solo Mid, it's not going to provide any stunning either. It's going to be a Templar Assassin. I believe Tem uh, Super is going to be playing. Are we having a remake? Yeah, we're having another remake. Okay. So. You can look at us again. Templar. <laughs> and why not, right? Templar Assassin being the last pick up here. I imagine it's going to be a 1v1 matchup against Queen of Pain mid. Now, you play this matchup a ton. Give us a little bit of down low in terms of who has the advantage in that matchup. And maybe perhaps why, why DK has kind of went for that solo mid hero particularly. Um, it does a lot of damage. You can... The traps provide a lot of mobility for you. It's a good team fight hero too. Mm -hmm. The raw damage potential in the early mid game potential it has is really high. She doesn't if seem like a team fight hero, right? She seems like one of those heroes that runs in, kills one or two, and then that's kind of it. She's kind of deceptive because in team fights, if you can initiate in with refract, and if you get an item like a BKB quickly enough, mm -hmm. then you can just blow somebody up really quickly. Right. But um, in terms of the one-on-one -on -one matchup of Queen of Pain and TA, Queen of Pain should do a little better early. 
if you get pulled sentries, actually, you can do quite well. Right. But once, if that doesn't happen, as soon as um, TA hits, depending on when she wants to get meld, traditionally it's four, but you can get it a little earlier against um, a hero like Queen of Pain. You get Every time she a throws, one, right, basically. Yeah, you can throw, no, I still think Maybe you get two. refract at okay. level one. But every time she throws the Shadow Strike, you can just Meld Dodge it. And that negates the harass entirely. Okay, let me quickly ask you a question. As you're the Queen of Pain, you're up against okay. a TA, your team decides to pull you. What do you want? Do you want 200 gold worth of regen, or do you want that pair of Sentry Ward? So you could get your No Talisman and do more damage. Because there's definitely a consideration there, right? Because what we more commonly seen is pull regen and then buy the, buy the node themselves. Yeah, I'd imagine that would, that's what would happen. Okay. Because even if... Um, you don't win the matchup, you stu you'll you still do okay because the attack animation is so good. Right. You do have the range advantage, and there are a lot of things that go your way in that matchup. Okay. The only thing that kind of hurts is the fact that TA doesn't really take damage against a hero like Queen of Pain. Mm -hmm. You can meld dodge the Shadow Strike. You can refract dodge the, um, the Scream. Sure. So it's really difficult to straight up kill. But at the same token, Templar Assassin can't really kill you because... Right. Just and no you can passively harass her all day. Exactly. Hero, yeah. So... It's not a matchup. It's kind of one of those matchups where it breaks sort of even. The mm -hmm. later it goes, Templar Assassin, obviously, more refract charges, the better you're going to do in terms of last hitting because it doesn't take anything to deny. But Queen of Pain does okay. All right. That's pretty good. For those of you guys who are joining us, we are doing the Alien Weird, and this is the second play day, DK versus MUFC. We just finished the draft. It looks like we're having a... Uh a quick remake. Although the server's a little bit wonky today. Hopefully everything's going to get fixed. So we're good to go. We're in the game. And of course, if you can't recognize by the lack of hair, this oh is yeah. Blitz Soda. I just realized that every single person that's been in this house mm -hmm. has gotten like, a haircut. has lost hair. Yeah. I mean, God's had, I don't know, maybe, uh, I probably lost the most hair still. Okay. You had the most hair to start out with. Of course, you're going to lose it the most It took so long to cut it all. I was actually just like waiting in the chair for like, and he's like 35 minutes. He's like, is this a fashion decision? I was like, no, not at no, all. I see. <laughs> all right, let's quickly introduce the DK lineup here. Who who do you favor in terms of the draft? Like, just on paper, you don't know who's on playing. On paper, yeah. If there was nothing to go off of, I would actually like um, MEFC's lineup. They have a ton of mobile heroes. They have Queen of Pain with Blink, Anti Major Blink. They've got um they've got a Nature's Prophet who can teleport around the map. Mm -hmm. That's three heroes that are really difficult to lock down and DK doesn't really have a lot of lockdown to begin with. They have one uh, really reliable stun right. with uh, the Nyx and then after that, what? how else do they stop? Clockwork, that's kind of it and that's yeah. not exactly reliable at so all. So how do you, yeah, so what I mean by reliable stun is you know, just right, click right. point, but how do you stop a Queen of Pain and an Anti-Mage? As long as they don't just group up together right next to each other. Queen. What they're going to need to do is DK okay. um, burning just has to get so farmed <laughs> and the flat cannon has to do so much damage that it won't matter. Yeah, the one thing I do want to talk about is that there is ready. some nice synergy going on between Clockwork and Gyrocopter is that if Clockwork ever gets any kind of good cogs in, that Gyrocopter is doing a ton of work. But let's quickly introduce both our team here. DK on the raid in. This is the first time in their debut performance in at least the Alienware Cup. Our TK is going to be going in top lane. Seems like it's going to be solo off lane clockwork. We do have QQQ playing Keeper of Light, Burning playing Gyrocopter, Super going mid definitely with Templar Assassin, Quick Bottle build, even pulled regen just a tiny bit by a uh, Tango. And last but not least, we're going to see MMY or Die playing Nyx Assassin. Is this my turn to introduce yes. MUFC? Yes. Okay, so for playing the Rubik, and he played an excellent Rubik yesterday, it's winner. Uh, playing the Nature's Prophet, we've got TFG, the Chen, we've got Ling. He also played that hero fantastically yesterday. Han Trash player is going to be on that Anti-Mage, who's actually set up for middle, it looks like. And FZFZ is going to be playing that Queen of Pain that he's so well known for. So it seems like the Radiant team is actually kind of diving deep into jungle, but instead of normally warding off a camp, they actually dropped one here. I guess scribbling? it's not a bad word by any means, right? Because generally, if you ward one in the actual camps itself, the Chen says, Guys, where's my creep? And I immediately de ward with sentries, which he does actually have. At this particular camp, I guess this, you might actually scout out sometimes, like a smoke, a stray smoke or something like that. But it's actually DK Burning going offensive tri lane here. This Radiant is something that you rarely side. see because he, he generally commands a safe lane for himself. You know he's one of the best carry player ever. And it's a surprise to see him even go offensive tri lane, especially the fact that you know that there is a Chen in the defensive jungle. So the 
the backstabs are going to be coming quick and hard. Yeah. And actually, it's going to be an anti-mage. I think they anticipate the matchup, and they actually stick the anti-mage bottom because they know it's going to be a solo clockwork. Uh -huh. And that's a matchup that anti-mage does quite well in, actually. So I would have seen. I would have liked to see him get pulled a little more regen because it's a little bit difficult. If um, But clockwork can't really kill him, right? So there's nothing for you to be afraid of. You can just get mana break early and then just right-click him. So you said the, you said that Winter expected a uh, offensive trialing coming out. Yeah, for sure. Oh wow! I mean, why else would you send an anti? Uh, yeah, it makes no sense, right? Line. So I mean, but why would you expect that? Because ninety nine times out of ten, especially against Burning, he, he goes he goes defensive lane. So that that's that's how I'm not reading. And also, RTK was first burn us out due to pretty good harass coming out from Han Trash player. Doesn't even have blink yet, and it looks like they're gonna try to make a gang. The tornado gonna fly over the tree. It does do a slight amount of slow, and RTK out of mana already at this point. Don't really have the creep wave to make that dive just yet. But the harass is already... Look at RTK. He's having a tough time. Yeah, he's definitely not having an easy time at all. The difficult thing is, if you put the clockwork at top, he's just going to die repeatedly. Sure. So, I think they anticipated ROTK being at the bottom lane, and they realized that the anti-mage will win that lane. And they're even pulling him health as well. And I don't think this is actually too necessary for too long. They're just making it so that they can secure his early game. And once he does that, once you have two levels of mana break, uh, the clockwork actually will never have mana. Yeah, yeah, right. With just a single level, after a couple hit, he he's already out of a ton of mana. So what about DK in terms of their top lane? So it looks like they've rotated QQQ to the bot, and looks like MMY is gonna stay here and do a little bit of pull themselves. And against the Nature's Prophet, who generally has a fairly tough early game, nice especially he's off to uh, forced to kind of off lane solo against tier three. Now he's getting kind of a ton of EXP under the tower, which he's not getting it just now, but. This is kind of what you want on your Nature's Prophet, right? Get that quick level 6, make him kind of a menace all over the map. Yeah, he's one of those heroes that will kind of be successful in terms of farm no matter what. Mm -hmm. So it's important for DK Burning to at least just try to get as much farm as he can. He's got 13 CS, so he's doing perfectly fine. Winter is actually jungling with Ling right now in the forest, just kind of trying to get levels out. Because they realize at bottom it's going to be really difficult to dive, especially with the Keeper of the Light right there. And we do see Keeper of Light trying his best to kind of harass Chen out of jungle. Doing whatever he can with things like, oh, my guy's got to get clapped. Got to be very careful. That clap, as well as any type of right click, <laughs> looks like we have a little bit of an independent chase going on. And meanwhile, Clock still looking to go further and further ahead. He's going to go all over the place with the skill build. Maxing Rocket is what he wants to do. Dropping some cards because he knows his mana is going to be gone very soon. Might as well use it when he still has it. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those things we might as well spam it, right? Yeah. So he's trying to use everything, actually. Oh, the clap's going to be going on the bot lane. I, d I think Winter trying to get in position for that lift, but the Furbok, not really quick enough to get in the front line to get a little bit of block. This is kind of what you want from your kind of this, this lane that's not really designed to kill, but any free kill that you do pick up is nice. But the blink for forward from Han Trash player has missed him a couple kills. Do you think his priority in this particular lane should be farming, or do you think he should actually look for kills? Because... You can get kills here, but at the same time, you're kind of anti major. You're not really having a powerful nuke early on. It's difficult because they don't really have any instant burst. Right. And Clockwork is a pretty tanky hero, right? He's got um, he's got 777 HP. You've got two armor. Uh, he he actually has a stout shield, and he's got boots ready. So he's actually done quite well for himself off the bat. And also, QQQ has just been spamming that wave and giving him as much mana as possible. So it's he's just making it difficult for them to die. I mean, Winner doesn't have full HP. Han Trash player's at, like, one... He's actually at half HP, so it's really difficult to dive in a situation like that. Meanwhile, burning up on the top lane, doing some really good zoning with Flak Hand, and of course, you could easily zone with Flak Land, but just kind of harassing the Prophet off the lane and getting the last hit on the tower. So, is that Chen creep coming in? Yes, it is, but nice Impale coming out from MMY. So, they got the top tower. They got a ton of farm on burning. Do you make the switch now and get them that safe lane farm, or do you stick burning up here? Because without that tier one tower... Uh, on the top lane, he could easily get ganked. Maybe not though, because he just picked up face boots. I think burning will do fine as long as MMY kind of just sits behind him. Right now, the laning phase, their uh, dual lane setup, which mm -hmm. is a little wonky, is actually um, is actually pretty safe because they know that Ling is top because he he actually has to get levels and stuff, right? Right. And so they know he's at top. Then and if uh, if winter leaves bottom at all, that means the anti mage won't get as much farm as he'd like. And it's really easy to spot out too when uh, Winter's gone, right? Because the lane is so far pushed up. Yeah, I mean, w Winter at this point, he's constantly being somewhat forced to kind of do a little bit of harass or even deny time coming from ROTK. But at the same time, ROTK doesn't really care. He's level 5. Like you said, he's constantly being spammed up uh, in terms of uh, mana regen. 
chakra magic and he's just rocketing keeping the lanes push you don't generally want to keep the lane push but this is kind of a traditional offlane dual lane coming out from dk it's where's illuminate and rocket spams it is so annoying even by having things like a ring of health on anti mage you get harassed down quite easily you can see that he's actually put a, a fourth point into spell shield which is not something we see too often actually yeah, now they make the lane switch. This is absolutely necessary. The rocket damage plus the Keeper of the Light Blast is too much to deal with at this point. Yep. The scary thing is, I don't actually know what Winner's going to do. He's level 3, he has no avenues of XP to go to, and it's difficult for him to roam as well, because who are you going to kill on this lineup? Yeah, I don't think... Well, I, I think they expected a Shen to do a little bit more in the early game phase, maybe find a good Furball creep or Centaur creep and go for some big dive, but the way that DK have laned it, it's hard to actually get kills anywhere. Of course, Clockwork, like you said, very tanky, very Dive close to his tower. And on the top lane, it's MMY, people constantly zoning and kind of uh, preventing anything. Oh, Queen go. of Pain. Yeah, she's got the haste, and I do believe QQQ should be dead. These Treants not helping out right now. MMY as well, super coming in to reinforce. So sad when you find the haste rune, and you're surrounded by everywhere. Clockwork Cook, is he going to go for it? Yes, he is. Blinks on cooldown for a long time, and the battery is still. The haste is running out, and the rocket will eventually hit. And the question is, no, she's going to salve up just fine. Yeah, that was actually a really nice attempt by FZ to try to make some, something happen, because this passive game right now is uh, favoring DK quite a bit. The last hit advantage is in Burning's favor, and Anti-Mage is 32, but then after that, it's uh, it's all DK, and they have a tower on top of that. Yeah, that tier 1 tower was get, uh, last hit by Burning as well, so the mid lane, we haven't really watched it too much. It's kind of your last hit slash harass war, just kind of a ton of spamming, nobody really having a real advantage there. Uh, you saw Queen of Pain trying to make something happen with that haste rune, unfortunately not really getting anything done. But just like you said, in this kind of more passive play style, you know DK is going to be the better mid to late game team. And the fact that this 0-0 so far with no tower being the destroyed, uh, at least in MVFC's play time. favor, I, I just don't see them kind of winning this game in the long run. Yeah, their supports need a lot of levels too. And right now Chen, yes, who we saw played very well by... Ling the other day, he's only level 3 at 7 minutes, and that's not something you actually see very often. Mm -hmm. And it looks like DK is going to pressure bottom 2. I really like this decision to constantly business. rotate and put pressure on. Because they realize that with a level 3 Chen, you can't really fight. Right. I mean, he's, he's going to get that one Centaur, but right now Centaur doesn't really even matter. The stomp is going to miss. It looks like they want right, to go on Raw with GK. Here comes FD, FD. Caldown's going to hit on everybody. Ling said that's going to be first one, and FD's going to give up a second kill. First one and double kill now going to burning. Here comes AM. Going to get one kill, but Prophet, you got to be very careful. Chakra magic being used. The Sprout comes in as well. Haunt Trash player waiting on the win, waiting on the blink in here, but he's going to be very careful because you're blinking into a rocket barrage. He does still have the mono Void and burning is looking low. At least, are they gonna get a tower tonight? Yes, they are. So, not too bad. You gave up first blood and double kill to burning, and that's never good. But you gotta kill us the AM, and you also got the tower tonight, so it's okay. Yeah, it wasn't the worst trade in the world, but still. Oh, here comes MMY already level six. Vendetta impale. They want to focus him down, and look at that mana burn to follow up. No anywhere for him to go, and illuminate to finish through. So. I have been watching too much, but yeah, it's a 9-minute Nyx Assassin that's already level 6, close to level 7. What was he doing top lane? He was just getting constant pulls and... Yeah, he was just pulling the side, and he was just getting pretty much free levels. And then the two kills at bottom Guess were the ones that buffered him too. I mean, he got a, he was there for the Queen of Pain. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile too, um, Super's just been free farming mid. He's uh, second in the game. He's got 10 over that Queen of Pain now. Opting not to even go bottom, realizing bottom that tower. DK is just doing just fine. And he opts the pressure mid, which it only has 369 HP. Yeah, and to, to me, that that's really the power of Gyrocopter. Any other carry hero in that instance really wasn't uh, going to do anything near in terms of, um, I guess, damage output as well as utility. Uh, the big AoE stun, or not stun, the big AoE damage as well as the big AoE slow. Burning actually going for a quality blade, which is the first I've ever seen in my life. 12% range bonus, which is like 7 damage extra on burning. Not yeah, but sure. it's the... Oh, it's top. Yeah, it's the tree cutting ability against nature's yeah, problem. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's what you want it for. I mean, the trees aren't the best disable, but they do act as a disable, right? Right. They did rotate 4 top, and they got a kill on the on ROTK, but at the same time... They lost the tier 1 top. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a good trade. That's not the worst trade in the world. I mean, MEFC will take it, but so will DK. Yep. At the same time, the difficult thing about playing against a hero like Gyrocopter is, with Queen of Pain especially, if you blink in and you get hit by call down, you're dead. The yep. Rocket Barrage is just so much damage. Yeah, I mean, 
right now she doesn't have max blink yet, but even if she does, the damage output from Gyrocopter is so quick, and she, he hits so hard that it doesn't matter if you have max blink. So I think Queen of Pain is going to be forced into going a BKB, and I say forced because you generally want a little bit more offensive item like a Scythe of Ice, which what we saw yesterday out of FZFZ was a 20 more 24 minute Scythe. Pretty impressive early on, or maybe even an Orchid if you want to go for some ganks, but I, I don't think he's going to have the luxury this game. Look at that burning now, looking for a second tier top. He's been pushing two, two towers on his own, basically, and now looking for a third. I think DK, I mean, they're going to run away with this game. I just don't see what MEFC could do. Yeah, MEFC, their lineup is picked for early game aggression and uh, map control, and they have none of that right now. They actually went for a similar style lineup against um, LGD yesterday, and it was unsuccessful, and it looks like this doesn't seem like the kind of style that they're making work right now. They're not splitting the map well enough for the anti mage to pressure, and they're not actually doing anything with uh, the nature's profit. That's the scary thing about playing against that hero is that he can turn any fight into well, an advantage at top. hook up top, that's gonna be really great. It's gonna hit Winter. Winter's basically dead for sure. He's trying his best to drop some spell, and here comes Super. Somehow he has that haste rune. <laughs> what a pause in the game. Clockwork has disconnected, but I mean, I don't even want to call it a tactical pause because that hook before the disconnect has hit everybody, and now it's it's a big chase from DK, and I think MBFC is gonna lose a couple more heroes. Yeah, at the very least, um, anti mage is fine obviously he's still got blink up fzfz he does have blink and the pause actually kind of works in his favor because he has yeah because he has time to think about it now because he, he has to think to himself if i blink forward the ta if you click on him he still has traps he also still has haste exactly so you kind of have to blink into the trees here uh and then just bottle tp out and that's your best hope so if he can make the the jump on the left then i think he has a decent chance I don't of surviving think that jump it's a level 2 blink. I don't think it goes that long, right? Well, you'd have to walk like an inch and then try to do it. Okay. Because if you just uh, blink straight up, you're leading your nature's profit into sure death as well. And Well, your nature profit is dead for sure. That's well, how I, I see mean, it. Okay, if the nature's profit TPs right now, uh -huh. just right now, immediately, then he should be okay. Because what's going to stun him? The rocket will hit too late. Um, MMY... Won't be able to get the impale off in time. It, it's kind of close. I mean, right. Burning could just cast Rocket Barrage, but it's only level one. We'll, we'll watch it play out here. FC Blink oh, can't okay. even well, blink. My God. <laughs> and now DFG hasn't been really TPing. He's trying to walk his way out of there. There's no protection in Tier 1 Tower. Cell Sprouts, and here comes the Meltdown. She's... Oh, I agree with you. I thought he could have TP out. In fact, he Spell Sprouted and had no mana left. So that was a little bit awkward. I think if you just TP'd there, um, he would have died, but it would have been a bit harder. I mean, the, God, I didn't... So what actually ha ended up happening was the damage, I think, from Super didn't apply yet uh -huh. for the meld. And and then the negative armor just made him blow up. Right. So so it was just... We <laughs> thought Queen of Pain at least getting a like blink <laughs> off, and not even that. So uh, DK I wins that one single-handedly, uh, overwhelmingly. And again, I, I just don't see MUFC kind of making that big impact because they don't have that kind of hero to do so. I guess Queen of Pain is your best hero doing it, but she's only level 8. Doesn't even have treads yet either. Wow, this is just a tough Radiant game. In fact, Keeper of Light on, on the Radiant side. Oh, a little bit of backdoor Radiant action coming out from TFG. TP coming out from Clockwork. Is he going to make out a light battery or so? Oh, the mini stun's getting blocked by the Treants. Nice micro. That tower's going to get denied, but that's a little bit extra gold that, you know, hey, that you weren't going to get before. It's just okay. Yeah, definitely fine. But at the same token, Burning is 4-0-1. This offensive um, dual lane has paid off in spades. Their dual lanes in general just work so well. That ward early... To spot out that Chen, yep. it was brilliant. And at the same token, ROTK played that lane perfectly at bottom. Just did a good job of never dying. QQQ, I mean, shout out to him as well. Just being able to spam out, protect his uh, clockwork against the anti-mage. And he essentially made Winter useless. Yeah, he wasn't actually in lane and just spamming until he had like level 2 or 3. Yeah, at the early pulling. levels, he was pulling and more importantly, harassing Chen. Like he was kind of sending Illuminates to his wave, making sure that his jungle was not free, basically. MMY into the enemy jungle, just kind of skirting past some sentry. We've got to be very careful where he walks. Oh, here comes. I think they want to gank against Han Trash Pro, but invisibility has ran out. And Right now, Han Trash Pro is not really farming. And even if he gets Battle Fury right now, I just don't see him having farm having farm room because against a uh, clockwork, against a Templar assassin, and against a Nyx assassin, he he's not gonna find any neutral camps. Yeah. Maybe he's, he's gonna even be forced to jungle in the enemy jungles. The neat thing too is 
Uh, DK doesn't actually have to kill or pressure Han Trash player. Right. Just because Burning is farming so much better than him. Burning's almost going to get a Helm of Dominator and a Shadow Blade at 14, 15 minutes. And this is generally when you just have to Shadow Blade, right? Exactly. So on top of that, he's got a Ring of Basilius. He's got a full Magic Wand complete. I mean, this guy's farm is... Uh, he's found the hood, Lumi. <laughs> he's actually found the hood. Discovered the Thug Life and uh, everything else in between. We're going to see a self TP out up on... Uh, from Profit on the bot lane and Burning says, Yeah, man, if you're not gonna stop me, I'm gonna keep going. So, Queen of Pain is to me the only way for MDFC to, to come back. If you hit like a five man Sonic wave and do a couple of pig off, but look at right now uh, on the Keeper of Light, it's already got the mech finish. So, your Queen of Pain just got nullified. I just don't see anything that MDFC could do. We were talking about how they lacked uh, burst damage and damage in general early MDFC, right? And now they have even less of that, right. And you know, there's some some heroes that just don't care. Like wow, Arya TK is so spiteful. What's he the just war? like? He just used uh, Cogs and Rocket Flare on that poor troll at top, <laughs> and he still didn't even kill it, man. Maybe he should have stuck for it as well. It's one uh, of those intimidation plays. You're so far ahead. You're thinking to yourself, you know what? Screw this guy. Yeah, man. Why? Why the hell not? And uh, DK, despite being very far ahead, they're gonna take it slow. There's no reason to give up any tier two tower for free. So Birdie's gonna come up here and defend that one. And meanwhile, the rest of the team is looking for that tier two mid. The and you know they're saying, hey the guys, Birdie's not here, come fight us. But I think DK at this point, they have enough items as well as level to they, get they do have, Um, It looks like they want to engage, but they realize too that they're oh, too they're far behind. they're teleporting in right now with FC, FC. Are they going to focus on Super? They lift him up, actually toss him back in. There's a net on top of him right now, but where's the mech coming through? They are going to mech, they're going to focus on Ling. Ling's going to get blown the hell up before casting his ultimate. Hontrash Pro is going to come right in, QQQ. Oh, I think he's actually going to go down as well. A couple more hits going to do the job. Here comes MMY trying to get something done. He got a little bit of Chakra Magic before he died. He does get impelled, but it's going to be a four-man call down. Here comes Big Bad Burning. It's going to be one dead. That is the most important player that RTK. Does he have hook online? No, he does not. FC is going to be low. That's a pretty good team fight considering that they're down so much gold in experience. And you got a 3v4. Self-TP out. Battery assault. Cogs going to cancel the TP, but at the same time, he also blocks off. Now TP out, and I just don't think they're going to find this one. It was close. Uh, Ario TK, just a second, like half a second late on that battery assault. The fight was pretty good. They managed to save the mid tower. It did take a, a little bit of a beating. The big thing there, though, is that Burning survives, gets the kill, anti-mage goes down. And oh, he's that's got the, the battle you fury. need alive. He's got the battle fury. Yeah, he does have the battle fury, but that's the farm time he lost. Yeah. Yeah, at a certain point, it's not really the kind of the goal that you lose when you die as a carry player, but the time that you're not accelerating your farm relatively to the other carry player who is doing nothing but farming. He's got that Shadow Blade finish. He's also going to be working towards his next item, which I imagine is a BKB. But, I mean, in, in a situation where you were just down by 10,000 gold before, finding that kind of fight is all you could ask for, right? You can't ask for anything more. Yeah, you had to take that fight. I mean, if you give up the mid-2-2 like that, without uh, Burning even being there, it sends a message, Lumi. What is that message? It's, uh, oh god, I don't know how much I can actually curse, but they're pretty much calling them punks. They're saying, uh, our main carry player with all the gold isn't even here. Like, come fight us. What are yep. you going to do? Well, MEFC took the verbal challenge. Challenge accepted. Oh, Winter's going to find top. Uh, Winter. Winter is, well, oh, oh, he misses the Vendetta hit, though. Oh, I don't, uh, Vendetta, Mana Burn, a couple more right clicks. They are going to get the job done, so... You know, MUFC is making some traction here. DK generally don't give up all these kind of free kills here and there. MMY definitely walking very aggressively. And here's the thing. It's like we said, Han Trash player is getting some time. He's up to 1,000 gold. Do you think he go for the Yasha here or Ultimate Orb? Or does he even go down that path? I feel like he just needs HP. I wouldn't even fault him if he goes straight Vit Booster right now. I guess that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But at the same time, because um, if you go Manta, Burning is still going to rip you a new one. Right with the flat cannon, so I wouldn't disagree with that decision at all either. The scary thing for me right now is that TFG is just having the worst time as a Nature's Prophet. He's got an 18 minute hand of Midas, and he's had to go with Stick. He doesn't even have upgraded boots at this point. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen late hand of Midas's, but it's never this late. It's like 14, maybe even 15 minutes, because generally that's when you start to take down some tier 1 towers. You, you get a little bit of trash and you get a little bit more gold, but this game, it, it's just a tough one. DK is definitely putting on a clinic, and again, how will MUC make that comeback? I, I think it started to see a little bit more possible, just at least on the face value, because 
they're starting to get a little bit more pick off. They're starting to win a couple more fights. But at the same time, it's DK getting complete full map control by taking down a tier 2 and now getting a gem on the hands of a Keeper of Light, who is susceptibly tankier at this point with Blinding Light with, with, uh, with a mech on top of him. So I don't think he's going to die anytime soon. And Dyer's going to have absolutely no map vision. Yeah, and at the same token, um, Burning, opting not to go for the BKB, instead realizing that he's so far ahead, picking up a Demon Edge, and I think Super has actually finally completed his BKB as well, which he didn't have for the last fight, and that would have negated the Queen of Pain damage entirely. So, I mean, what what do you think about the decision for Burning to actually skip the BKB? I mean, you're you're right that he's so far ahead, but at the same time, Jailcopter is not exactly your tanky hero. Is he relying on the mech? Is he relying on the fact that he has Life Seal and say, hey, me down with your level 10 or level now 11 queen of pain i'm gonna be okay i mean how's how are they gonna close the distance with a hero like clockwork the best thing that he can do is that he creates that buffer that barrier zone right right and you have heroes like mmy that can just sit back and wait for them to initiate on burning burning all he has to do is wait for the fight to come to him he just kind of sits in the back waits half a beat lets the fight begin without him super leads the fight if super dies it doesn't even matter he's got a bkb too so he's not going to and so, I think I completely agree with this decision. He has enough heroes to kind of just buffer damage. And even if he does get caught out, you have allies that come in from afar. The clockwork, like you said, to kind of disengage for you. You have the mech, you have the blinding line from the keeper. So, he definitely does have a ton of protection. And now DK says, hey guys, I'm going straight into the Roshan pit. You guys see me, you guys have wards here. I don't care. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, definitely. There's really not much they could do about it. Yeah. Burning, you know what he should do? He should just uh, go divine. Yeah, he should definitely go divine. No, I think that's I'd how like you throw that. a game. It's like a one game. And, oh, you have the Aegis. Maybe you just do go divine. I mean, what the hell they're going to do? Yeah, what's going what's gonna to stop you? You put out so much damage that as soon as the fight starts, any sort of fight you start, you just kind of lose. But at the same time, it's... It's such a scary it's item. It's taking a necessary risk for absolutely no reason. No, there is a reason. Style points. <laughs> well, it's like you said, he's found the hood, so my, you know, the real Doug would actually do it. Yeah, just I mean, what's find. the point in winning if you don't win with style? There you go. And Burning's a player that definitely has style, right? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I could agree with that, because it's definitely your, one of your safest players ever. You know, don't, don't go for the big throws. I, I don't think Burning and, and, the, and the word throw has ever been in the same sentence. Yeah, so. he's one of those players that just plays really safely, great game sense, realizes where to be at all times. That yeah. should be an MKB. Please prove MKB? me wrong. I, I want to be proven wrong as well. It's like one of those times that Birding just goes divine and, and whatever oh, else. Uh, Hontrash Pearl though, he's got that vid booster. He's now up to another 1,000 go. He's getting closer and closer to that man style. But for me, that man style isn't actually a successful team fight item. It's like you said, there's so much AOE coming out on the Radiant team that those Manta Illusions is going to be dead. What I think it's really going to be used for is a way to debuff, a way to split push, and sometimes you're going to get a couple more hits oh, against Oh, at bottom. He's going to get lifted up, he's going to get tossed back, there is a Vendetta, there's a Dust coming out right now, but there's no more stuns, and he's going to just walk out, here comes ROTK, can he find the hook, he's juking to the right side, trying to get the proper angle. He will. Well, there's going to be trap used, and actually MMY is going to get forced that forward. You go for Ling here, Impale is going to get broken out, and Ling is going to be dead. So a gang that goes on MMY gets turned back against, and I think this is their avenue into the high ground if that's what they want. If they want to get the high uh, tier 2 on the top, they could do that as well, but no, they, they want the high ground. They say, this should be our racks. Yeah, and Burning's actually going to get TP'd in as well. He's still got the Aegis. He's getting an MKB delivered to him. Oh, right now. If, is it going to get delivered? TFG trying to make some plays, but unfortunately, he's got no damage. Man, 22 minute Nature Prophet cannot kill a courier. That's some sad life here. And Winter gets going to get impaled up. He's going to be dead for sure. That cog has some sick range, and they're going to get him down then. Yeah, I think this is formality at this point here. Burning, working on that melee rax. The melee rax is not long for life. Yeah, they even fourth the top tower just to piss off Han Trash player, who absolutely has to do this right now. Taking a fight with his team without a Rubik. I mean, there's no way, right? Yeah, exactly. So this isn't a fight that you can really take. Burning just continues to farm. After that uh, set of racks, he's got 2.3k after just buying his MKB. All those are going to try to get another gank attempt on MMY. Regardless of how many how many times uh, or how this game go, they're at least going to try their best to kill MMY a couple of times. It's just unsuccessful because the four staff is doing so much work. Blackrock Hook's gonna re-engage against TFG. Can you send him back out in time? No RTK in bigger trouble because anti mage has now blinked into position. Double two men impaled. They're gonna focus on oh, TFG. Burning gets TP. Mecha and burning. Here he comes. 
Man, the damage call down, the flax, everything from burning. They actually do get re grab the gem as well. They didn't even have to use a mech from QQQ, and I do believe they were, they could just walk back from the bot lane and go mid, or they could just go down the mid lane. Anything they want to do, they can do. Yeah, at this point, it doesn't quite matter. Burning doesn't even have his MKB on him yet. Rough day and he's got 3.2k on top of that, and he's already putting out damage damage. I think I think the game is telling Burning, Man, you have a lot of time to go walk, go to the secret shop. <laughs> Sitting close to that uh, you know, 3,800 gold. What's going to kill you, Burning? I know. He literally actually isn't in the start of the fight. He gets recalled in in the middle. Like, he's in the absolute safest position ever, so... Yeah. And Nyx actually has a 4 staff as well. They have two 4 staffs to save him, a yep. mech. Yep. They've got a bunch of stuns, no BKBs on MEFC. Blinding I'm, Light is another stuff. I mean, come on. This If there's a game to do it, it's this one. It's this one, man. But how how bad would it be if it was like, you get that Divine, your Aegis you runs lose? out, and then like... They oh, okay, he's going, he's going! Sell that Crawling Blade! Oh my... Oh, oh. he's gonna do it! My man burning! Oh no! What? Oh. What a juke! <laughs> what a fucking juke! Wow, we got juked. He definitely... Oh man, he... He set it up perfectly too. Yeah. 3,700 gold. Sells a Qualling Blade. I thought it was like, oh man, he, he's not making space because he needed that gold. What a player I'm though. I'm very disappointed. DK burning, faking us out. Yeah. He could have just sent the courier to get it if he was going to do that. Nope. No, he knows we're watching. We know we're watching. Super has the uh, Desolator finish as if they need even more damage. They have it now, and that's here to retire. What is the last hurrah going to be here coming off from MBFC? Because they're not tapping out just yet. They're going to go right on burning. But he's still got the Aegis. anti mage blinks back out. Oh my god. Just one call down, a couple more flacked, and everybody's dead. Nice force that forward against Ling Ling. Mechs himself up, but just not enough. And burning is actually dropping quite low. Aegis, though, is it running out anytime soon? I don't think so, or does it even matter? He gets he eats a Sonic Wave, I guess. I think the Aegis was about to no, he had a lot of time. No, Never mind. Fine. Meanwhile, Winter. They force that four here against Winter though, but in fact they want MUFC's on trash pull. Everybody's blinking away, everybody's surviving. They're actually gonna get one kill on QQQ, but he's out of mana at this point, and that means he's a dead man. Does he have magic wand charges? No, he doesn't. Boom. My bad coming out from anti mage as well, but this is this is trash time, as you call it. This is uh, DK burning, padding his stats, 6, 0, and 5, 230 CS. What's his GPM? I, I'm very curious. I quickly check out here. Is gold for a minute? It's, yeah. I said minute. It's 670. He's doing pretty well at this point in the game. I mean, nothing is really slowing him down. Uh, this game just... MEFC had a nice, decent hurrah. But the game was so lost already, just because the Chen wasn't able to set up anything. They had an aggressive lineup without a whole lot of disables. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need, really, if you want a team fight. You need big AoE spells with a lot of disables to make comebacks. Or you just need to outplay your opponents. But DK played so safe. Yeah, uh, it didn't seem safe the way that they laned it, but it actually worked out so well. Uh, and it worked out for the best here for DK as well. And here comes Shadowcopter getting ready to do the last push. I mean, DK is so damn ahead right now. They're ahead by like 15,000 gold. But, but yeah, we'll, we'll defend our towers. DK is one of those teams that notorious to say that even when we're about to rack you, we don't let you to get that tier one. You know what's uh, really hurt TFG this game? The amount of TPs he's bought. Just because, throws? yeah, because he's just had to, uh, he's like, well, one, one wave my TP gets canceled, then I'll have the backup. And he's got an ultimate orb at 27 minutes with the hand of Midas. He's getting kind of close to that Hex, which they absolutely need to fight. But even with that... I, I don't think Hex does it. Yeah, there's I, a Satanic on Burning. I mean, I almost say at this point here, you go with Axe Scepter just to get a little bit more counter push. And then get a refresher after that and be like, Hey guys, let's just go deep. Because nothing else... We're, 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 you actually can't you can't even take a head-to-head -head team fight anymore at this point for MUFC. So maybe you should get a little bit more creative with the build. But I don't think he's going to have the time for it. Because here comes Burning. He's actually in front of the team for once in his life. And uh, looks like this Rax is going to be going down. Yeah, 2k HP on top of a Satanic. And there's only one Disable on MUFC. Yep. This is a perfect situation for him to just kind of run oh, forward. Burning is just going to be flacking off. And oh my god, look at the Chen Creeps. Look at everybody else is just dying. The Rockets going forward. Burning says, I want the Rax. They're going to focus on these Illusions as well. They do get them. And 
Well, Super is also going to make the process a little bit quicker, a little bit less painful by dropping that minus seven armor on those buildings. Winter's going to initiate it on a couple of right clicks. He's just dead. One one hit from burning, 300 damage. And Hontrash Pearl is going to blink back out. And he tries his best to kind of distract him and whatnot. And it feels like DK is just. They were this giant. They have this giant fly swatter. Is that what's called? Yeah, fly swatter. Is it fly swatter? Yeah. Okay. What? A, why do you just? That makes too much sense. <laughs> You're just. It's like sometimes it's, I try to like do this thing called English, <laughs> and it's like so ambiguous. It's like a breadstick, though, right? Because it perfectly describes what it is. Right. Fly swatter. So I guess that's why what confuses you. I don't. I don't know. Is that the first thing that came to your mind? Yeah. Well, because it's one of it's one of those terms that perfectly Diet describes what it, something is, right? I, I guess. I never thought of it. What else way. could it be? A breadstick? I don't know where I went with this. I hope you understood that, Lumi. I mean, when you have two Asians talking to each other, only the selective feel could 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 get what we're we're talking about. Yes, we are different Asians, though. That's yeah. the thing that really hurts us. But, anyways, Hand of Midas gonna come back up for uh, TFG. I don't actually know what he's bought. Maybe he's got the Void Stone. No, he's bought he back. I think maybe. Just has no money right now, and trying to use his ultimate to try to get as much farm as he can, but. This game seems all but a formality. Burning just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yep. And uh, there's really... He hasn't died once. He hasn't really... He's not going to get stopped. Is, is DK really waiting for the next Aegis? No, in DK, that's exactly what they're waiting for. It's like, guys, let's get some more GPM. Let's make sure that we don't you know, give up any kills. Yeah. And well... But uh, FZFC does finish his Hex, is going for the BKB. The thing about getting a BKB against a lineup at, like this at uh, this point, you absolutely have to against uh, Clockwork. The Nyx Assassin Mana Burn plus the Mana Leak is the most annoying thing in the world to an anti-mage. But at the same time, um, burning. He just yeah. does so much damage. Surviving is not enough at this point, right? Yeah. Like, the physical damage is just too much at this point. Well, I mean, MEFC not tapping out just yet, despite all the odds are against them. Lyft is going to get forced out, so their time is running out. They got to make... They have to go now. Yeah, they have to heck, so there's also no Aegis. Also, there's no BKD on Gyrocopter. They do the side him up. Behind. Where's the lift? They do lift him up as well. The Chainsaw's not there, but the Force Sap back out. The mech kills. Everything's there. Contrast Bro drops a Mana Void, but Bernie had all the mana in the world against him. And it's now going to right click where Contrast Bro actually blinks back out. It's a one for one trade, but it's not enough. Super full HP. Burning full HP. They see the exposed racks. They will take the exposed racks. And Clockwork is just fountain diving time at this moment. And that's all she wrote. Yeah, what a dominant Guys, performance by DK. Brands. Gonna take Mega Creeps. Got yep. If you had to use one word to describe this win, it's methodical. DK went from, uh, they did the dual lane setup that usually is kind of a little wonky. You usually see the 3-1-3 uh, or something similar to that, but they realized that this is a game where they can actually get away with just doing dual lanes. Mm -hmm. And they completely neutralized the Chen. The supports um, for MEFC just didn't do anything this game. They weren't able to. They're completely isolated out. To me, this game just fully describes how DK generally plays. They always bring their A game. They don't mess around. They don't actually fold to the pressure. I mean, we were waiting for Burning to get that Divine, almost jokingly, but that was probably one of the worst items he could have gotten in that chance, right? <laughs> so right now we just have Fountain Diving time as Burning is just it's going to work. And, I mean, Madadago, like you said, it. they took every tower with absolute safety. They took every Roshan with absolute safety, and they just kind of power drive their way to get a couple of Raxes, and that was it. Yeah, this isn't a team that's flashy. You know, yeah. it's not like a Team Liquid where Korok would definitely have gotten the Divine. The divine yeah. yeah, it's one of those teams that they're like, okay, this is what we need to do to win. We'll go tower to tower. Burning will farm behind this. We'll have insurance measure after insurance measure. So Except that one team fight where they try to punk them. Yeah, exactly. So. But I can appreciate that because if you win that fight, then you essentially win no matter what, right? Yeah. And it wasn't even the worst thing because it was the anti trade. Yeah. yeah, and and burning came in uh, and to clean up. So that was an absolute dominant performance coming up from DK. This is the best of two series, so game two is coming up next. But before that, let's send it back to the much facial hair analyst table. We can grow it too if you want. It'll take us like fifteen. Keep years. telling yourselves that, guys. Not only do we have a lot of facial hair, but we speak English quite coherently. Oh, I don't know. Boom! Shots fired. It's so true. It My is. grammar is impeccable sometimes. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a high five properly later as well, because that's something else Lumi can't seem to get right. But <laughs> even though this was a, quite a one-sided game purge, actually, I thought DK played really smart in a number of yeah. ways, and I'd love to talk about a few of them. So 
First of all, Burning's a huge troll for not buying that Wraith here. That was amazing to watch. If uh, those casters would have just checked the courier flying out, though, I'm pretty sure there was a double javelin on it. I, but I mean, I was like, oh man, he is almost at 3,800, but... Oh, did you? Yeah. After. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was a one did, point did where... Did already have MKB at that point? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He trolled... It, two times it felt like he was trolling, but... You look at this MUFC draft, they were light on teamfight control, and I feel a big reason why is because of the smart bans from DK, especially banning out Faceless Void. This is a carry that MUFC loves to run. They had a lot of success with it yesterday. They've yeah. been running it for a while, and you remove the Void. MUFC still want to take it somewhat late game, so they go for the anti-mage, but he just doesn't allow you to take the fights. And you look at their lineup, they had a Prophet, a Chen, uh, who else did they have? Rubik. Anti-Mage, Queen of Pain. They had one actual reliable stun. That's Rubik Lift. No follow-up. Hard for them to take fights, and DK punished that. I, I felt through the draft as well as just the playstyle. Getting heroes like Clockwork, Nyx Assassin. Yeah. This, this lineup for MUFC really wanted to split push, but it's very hard to do that against... Uh, against a clock and a Nyx, because out yeah. of nowhere, they come, they gank you, and they kill you. And that happened a lot of the times so when they would initiate on Nyx Assassin. How many times did he almost escape, or did actually escape? You'd yeah. pop invisibility and run away, and they lift him, and then it was like, he just would walk away. And, and then it's the wah, wah, I know. Wah. Uh, you, you need more disables. I really want to talk about uh, how great the dark, or the um, Clockwork Coddle dual lane was. That's normally a matchup where people used to play Clockwork, uh, maybe like a year ago, and sometimes they would end up against an anti-mage, and Clockwork would get absolutely wrecked, because he would get his mana drain so fast at the anti-mage, but they just maxed Rocket, and they had a Coddle there, and he could just spam Rocket. It's and so that's annoying. When does anti-mage lose to magic nukes? It almost never happens, but just putting a dual lane yeah. there, to give them an advantageous matchup just is a huge difference where normally a free farm anti mage turns into something that can't do as well. And the crazy thing about that dual lane is not only can they slow down the anti mage, but when you have Keeper of the Light and you're maxing Rocket Flare and Clockwork, you can steal the poles. You can actually get yeah. a lot of additional farm and gold experience that normally you won't get. I, I also look at this draft and I think Blitz harped on this repeatedly that MUFC just lacked team fight. And I really got to echo that, not only because I felt they I, they just needed more stuns in general, like that game they were just lacking. You're up against the Templar Assassin, a Gyrocopter, heroes that left unchecked, left undisabled, just do too much damage to yep. deal with in the fights. That was the first problem, but also MUC generally wins when they have team fight. When they fall short in that department, I feel it's a team that struggles. And it's one of the reasons why I think a carry like Faceless Void really is something that they'll be looking towards. If But if you don't get the the control from your carry... You probably need it for one of those off laners. Maybe something like a clockwork for them would have been better than, say, a Nature's Prophet. Yeah, they did have that one team fight mid where they were able to take out the TA, who was slightly out of position. It was mostly just magic burst, and despite like the the mech and the other heals on him, wasn't able to survive. But once he grabs BKB, it's over. Like right. you're not going to get mana drain from anti mage. You can burn your refraction shields pretty fast, but who cares? Because you won't get bonus from the mana drain, and like. He became invincible at that point. Very, very hard to kill, and MUFC couldn't fight back after that point. Did Bernie even get a BKB? He didn't, right? <laughs> no, he I don't think so. He just went damage into a Reaver, and then he got Satanic. And that last team fight, they even threw Anti-Mage ulti on him. They're like, oh, just kill him, kill him. Let's but do it, it was, guys. Let's he, go. He healed through it. It was like, oh, I just did 400 damage and one more auto. There we go, full HP, and <sighs> GG. They had no stun, so Bernie made a really smart adjustment. Normally, yeah. he would go for an early BKB on Gyro. He almost always does that, but... Didn't need to this game, made the adjustment with this build, really panned out. And the last thing was, well, going Chen against that lineup, you have to do well early because yeah. the creeps are so useless. Keeper of the Light, Illuminate, Flat Cannon, Call Down, Rocket Spam, they die in seconds. So I felt like MUFC just had to get too much accomplished in the laning stage where it's just not reasonable to expect your team to do that much against a team of DK's caliber. Like, you may win the lanes, but I don't, I don't think there's any way they were ever going to win them as hard enough to have su success with that draft. And on top of that, DK played great. Yep, so looks like our predictions are all pretty accurate so far. A lot of us said 2-0. Two, two, did anyone say 1-1? One, one? Um, is it you? I said 1-1, one, one If and I even said if they get the Chen, and they have that early aggressive strategy. They got the Chen. Not looking good. Um, so. I continue to fail on the predictions Everybody here. Everybody... Remember this as game two rolls out in a possible 2-0. It's okay. Um, we, we have facial hair. We speak good English. Yeah. But it's looking really good for DK, honestly. I think they're definitely playing a little bit better than LGD was yesterday. Yeah. So I think it's look, still looking pretty good. I'm happy with my prediction. Of moment. course, they're 2-0 in the group, guys. They have that forfeit win over LGD. And can they continue to pile up the points here today? They've already got one. Let's see if they can get two. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be game two of Team DK versus MUFC. Stay tuned.